Magic fans! <sighs> Assemble. <laughs> The Magic the Gathering world just got rocked. Wizards of the Coast just announced a partnership with Marvel, and it is deemed to be coming soon. Now, whether you're for or against Universes Beyond, you gotta admit, this feels, this just the feeling early on, like this is going to be extremely massive. Today I want to talk about all of the possibilities for the partnership with Marvel. And again, just some of the first things that come to my mind is this news is brand new. And then I want to talk about if this is a positive or a negative in my opinion. Again, that is just my opinion. I want to hear from each and every one of you in the comment section when we get to that part. But let's talk about what this means for Magic the Gathering. They announced this partnership with Marvel and Marvel was a massive IP, probably still is, but like, listen, I don't know, maybe the glory days of Marvel back around, I'm like old school magic with Marvel. Like, ah, oh, back during some of the first Marvel movies, those were the good old days and now it's all gone downhill. But even so, Marvel is gigantic. Now the Marvel IP opens up the door to a ton of different possibilities. Magic the Gathering, Commander, theme decks, obviously Marvel sets written in different timelines. The whole idea of the Avengers, maybe we see the whole uh, team up style gameplay and the, the name is escaping me at this moment. Let me know in the comment section below where it's like arch enemy, I think it is, where everyone plays against one massive foe. All of these things coming back around the Marvel IP. Now, this is going to be exciting for Magic the Gathering as a whole. I think Marvel is a wonderful opportunity to get a lot of people that wouldn't already have experienced trading card games in on TCGs. Now, I know Marvel goes crazy wide, and I know a lot of us have seen the Marvel movies. We like them, we love them, we hate them, whatever it might be, however you might feel about these things. But there are tons of Marvel fans out there that will have never been to a local game store. They've never sat down and played a trading card game. And as I've talked about on this channel with Disney Lorcana, things like this, in my mind, act as gateways into our hobby and the marvel ip crossover presents itself as a massive gateway into our hobby heck look how successful lord of the rings was i do believe that lord of the rings probably had more crossover more in common like more lord of the rings fans were already trading card game fans at a higher rate than the percentage of Marvel fans that are already trading card game fans, if that makes sense. So this, this represents a giant window into our community and into our game. And I think that's always a good thing to get more people playing Magic. And listen, I can't find a negative with that. But when it comes to the possibilities for entrenched Magic fans, there's no chance we don't see crazy hype around this. Think back, take a little time machine back to the start of Lord of the Rings and all of the hype. And then for the holiday release, seeing, I think it was Elijah Wood or the actor that plays Frodo. I, I, I'm so terrible with pop culture, but I think that's the name of the actor. I apologize if I got it wrong. Listen, now you got two opportunities. Tell me where I'm wrong in the comment section already. We're like two minutes in. Great. Great job, Josh. But I really do think this represents the opportunity for some crazy hype. And there's going to be some stuff in this product. And we don't have any information yet, so we can't say any more than that. But good lord, there's no chance that we don't see them in the Marvel crossover revisit the one of one, revisit serialized cards, revisit special variants or limited items because we see collectors from that outside IP, like we saw with Lord of the Rings, buying into this product, you know, becoming part of our community and taking a shot at pulling something collectible just because they like Marvel, they like Spider-Man, they like Iron Man, they like Thor. Like, people who enjoy those IPs and those worlds are going to find their way into Magic the Gathering, and thus Wizards of the Coast is going to have to reward collectors of Marvel memorabilia and comic book collectors and old school Marvel fans and new school Marvel fans for engaging with Magic the Gathering. And I would be surprised. Hey, you know what? I'll timestamp this now. Let me know in the future. If you come back, you watch this video forever from now, let me know if they don't do this because it would be a surprise. Now, they could take this in a different direction. We see the play booster box having the special guest slot. And you could tell me a world where this crossover is so big and they want it to last for so long that it's not a Lord of the Rings one-off set with a follow-up small release, but rather little Marvel storylines sprinkled in. Think a la Transformers, a la Jurassic Park into the play booster box. If they take this route, which again, is a possibility. We might not see that 
crazy hype cycle, that crazy one of one, the crazy serialization that we mentioned, but rather we see something more like, hey, I want to collect all of the Marvel cards. Like I want to collect all of Jurassic Park cards from Ixalan because me and my brother are massive Jurassic Park fans. It was just so cool growing up and you know being able to experience those movies. You tell me a story where they take that and they take maybe it's Iron Man is the set because the crossovers with Marvel, but it doesn't have to be Avengers. It doesn't have to be the idea of all the Marvel characters all at once. It could be an Iron Man subset. It could be a Spider man subset and so on and so forth now i think this doing this gets them less bang for their buck but it's probably got the higher chance to trickle people in in a more healthy fashion heck the one-off massive marvel set the avengers universes beyond avengers set has the ex the ability to just explode and become this massive thing but like just kind of tickle in the fancy of our marvel fans be like hey you like Iron Man? Guess what? Well, in this release, there's 10 Iron Man's cards you can get in the booster box. That's $150 at the game store, store shelf. Oh, guess what? You like Spider-Man? Same thing here. Guess what? You like this? Same thing here. But the big lead that we're burying here is hmm, Marvel's currently owned by Disney, I'm pretty sure. And Disney is has a trading card game that they currently are leasing their IP to. So I, I think this goes to show, listen, Disney is so massive and, and Marvel is such a big deal. Things can be segmented like that. I, that's a little nugget. We're going to make sure to talk about that on the channel. So if you haven't yet, racing to 6,750 subs and then from there on to 7K. 7K subs. I cannot believe that we are so close. So make sure you hit that sub button if you like videos like this. But all in all, this crossover is extremely exciting. I think there's a lot of meat to chew on here, but the question remains, is this good for Magic the Gathering? And I will say this, I, I, I have a couple mixed feelings on this. And all in all, I think this is massively positive for Magic the Gathering for a couple reasons I mentioned earlier, but I want to kind of press this caveat or just say this into a camera because I think it's important. It's okay not to like Universes Beyond. I'll, I'll admit some of the Universes Beyond stuff I'm not the biggest fan of. Like in modern, it feels weird when someone slaps down, you know, the one ring. Orcish Bowmaster, a little bit like closer on thing, but like the one ring, you slap down the one ring, it's like, eh, you know, kind of takes me out of it a little bit. But I've gotten over the whole screaming into a camera that Universes Beyond is terrible. I just, I can't bring myself to do that anymore because listen, it's clearly here. It's going to be here and Wizards of the Coast is going to continue to lean in. I don't anticipate the Universes Beyond going anywhere. And because of this, if I just look at it through a lens of, hey, Universes Beyond is going to happen. What do I think about this without the option of being like, I wish there was no Universes Beyond in my magic without that option on the table. I think it's great. I think we're gonna get a ton of eyes on Magic the Gathering. I think we're gonna continue to grow. And if we ever wanna bring things like local game store standard back, if we want to diversify our commander communities, heck, if we wanna keep just increasing the number of people that buy cards from our game stores, buy cards on the secondary market or people that there are to play Magic with, we have to continue to grow our communities. Because in 2023, listen, trading card games are a hard sell. Video games pull our attention. We have shorter attention spans as it is, and it's never been easier to have multiple hobbies and interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So trading card games are a harder sell in today's day and age. Opening up the window to our community, I think, is massive. It's a big deal. Let me know what you think about the Marvel crossover. And again, I'll say it one more time. Like 80% of you that watch these videos aren't subbed. Get us to 7K by the end of the day, which... Listen, that's not going to happen, but it's a really cool little slogan to say that I like. And if you want, share this video on any social media platform where you engage with Magic the Gathering. If you want to support further, consider joining the channel membership. It's five bucks a month. The last video we did was Wilds of Eldraine EV. It's a ton of fun in that community. Make sure you click that link that'll be in this video's description. Thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh, and well, we'll see you around. Goodbye.